Hey everybody, welcome back to Card Curiosity, where we try to find the best possible ways to make a good return on your investment in the sports card world. And today we have another special episode of Rip It or Skip It, where we break down a particular box of cards and try to decide after some careful analysis whether it is worth spending money to rip this card or, or rip this box, or if it's something that should be skipped altogether. So um, today we're going to look at 2024 Topps Heritage Baseball was released in the last couple of weeks. It's uh, one of the earlier products each year, I believe. And so uh, we're going to look at this. It's on the cheaper end. Um, if you remember what the four four things we really try to look at to make our decision. First, we look at the price of the product. We want to make sure it's, it's is it reasonable? Is it crazy expensive? Uh, next, we want to look at the checklist to see if there's too many players that uh, we don't want, if there's enough of the good players, if there's too many names altogether so that you'll you'll never have a chance to get a big hit. That, that could be a problem. The third, third thing we look at is gr the gradeability of the cards. We want to send these cards to PSA, and we want to get tens. That's how we're going to make money and profit by opening these boxes of cards. So if the cards are not in good shape when we get them out, that can be a problem. And then finally, the staying power or desirability of a particular card here to determine whether it's going to hold its value over long enough periods of time if you have the right players. So let's jump into the pricing here. And... You'll see that uh, if we go to Dave and Adams and you type in uh, Topps Heritage for 2024, there's going to be a couple different options. So you can see they have blaster boxes. This is what you would find at Walmart. These are around 30 bucks here on the store. Here uh, you have uh, the hobby boxes uh, at 105. You know, in the hobby box, you get one autograph or relic card per box. And yeah, they got individual packs and stuff here as well. So over at Blowout, you can see their prices. They only have the hobby boxes, no blasters, and they're at 100. So you can save a little bit of money by getting these boxes at Blowout cards. So on on the price side, I'm gonna, you know, I'm I'm gonna say the price is pretty good. Uh, we'll give the price a five here out of five. It's it's hundred dollars or less, which I think is very affordable, and so that's a that's a good place to be. But let's jump into the checklist here now and see what what the possibilities are for for getting the hits and so you can see what the cards will look like here a little bit they they've always got that um that throwback kind of kind of vibe from the older older sets uh you know here's an ellie rookie card uh, ellie's going to be the big name i think that people are going to be trying to find here and so uh, you know, a couple different ones here. There's going to be autographs. Uh, they got the red ink autographs, which I think are are actually pretty cool. And so, I I really enjoy I enjoy the look of these. They're they're kind of different than than a lot of things that we see these days. Here's a memorabilia uh, game used bat uh, kind of card. There, they're going to have inserts. One of the trickiest things from uh, Topps Heritage is that there's a lot of different uh, inserts and variations and things that. You may, you may have something really valuable and not know it, and so you kind of have to be careful there. Uh, but the breakdown is there's nine cards per pack in the hobby box. There's 24 packs per box, and then in the case, you get 12 boxes. So here's potentially the big big problem is that the set uh, size is 500 cards, which is a lot. It's a, just a huge amount. And if you're only looking for a handful of players that are going to be that valuable, then that that just kind of dilutes everything that you uh, that you might want, and make it harder to get the players that you might want. So, um, yeah, that's that's a concern to me. You know, as we scroll through and look at some of these these names, you know, Harrison Bader, we don't really need him. Lane Thomas, I don't have any idea who that is. Um, but I mean, they've got they got 500 players. They got some triple, you know, some cards with like double players on them, things like that. So. Anyway, this is, uh, it's concerning, you know, not, you, you're going to have to be really lucky, I think, if you look at this checklist. Going to, down to the autographs, you see I have different kinds of autographs here, uh, cut signatures, you know, there's 15 here for celebrity, three on this one, 12 here, and then like on the main, the main autographs, they call real one autographs, there's 94, and so 94 potential autographs here in this, this uh, particular set, and they're, um, they're they're just not there's there's too many 
too many bad possibilities in my mind. Uh, so I, I'm going to end up saying this is something. This is not going to get a good score on the checklist. I'm going to give it a one. And so one on the checklist. You got to get really lucky if you want to have a big hit here. So let's look at the great ability. If we look at 2022, you'll see that uh, this is. I was kind of surprised how how poorly they graded. So like the base cards here gemmed at a 26% rate, which is super, super low. That's not good at all. The autographs were even worse at 22%. And that's that's really all I need to see about 22. Like 22 was just not a good year uh, to gem these cards. If we click into it and look at like some of the big rookies, Julio was the one that was sent in the most and that gemmed at a 41%. Bobby Witt Jr. gemmed at 43. Still below that 50% mark. Um, I, I don't like that at all. If we jump to 23, though, they gemmed a little bit better. You had a uh, 58% clip on the, uh, the the base cards there. The autographs went jumped from 22 to 36. That's still not very good, but it, it was at least better. And so maybe they're they're making them a little better quality last year, and and maybe that will translate to this year. If you look at last year, the particular cards specifically that were being graded the most, Corbin Carroll. Uh, had the most, or I guess I didn't sort by the most, gems went to Adley. Adley had an 81% gem rate. Corbin was at 69 and Gunner was at 69 as well. So not too bad, a little bit better in 23. I uh, haven't looked at 24 yet. You know, it just came out, so we don't know. But if, uh, if it ends up being like it was in 2023, then you can see the, the gem rate on average is around 58%. So I'm going to give this gem rate a 3 out of 5. I know it's it's possible to gem, but not as high as I want it to be. Uh, lastly, let's look at the staying power and desirability of these cards. And, you know, I was kind of surprised as I looked at these. Um, you have, you know, looking at Julio, Julio's PSA 10 cards, the cards that are numbered in PSA 10 are going, they're still going for quite a bit. And, you know, this is a PSA 9 autograph here from Julio at, at 545. The, uh, you know, re refractors are going for, you know, close to 100, things like that. It's a purple. Here's a hot box refractor. Uh, it, it's, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised here that the, the cards that aren't going to, to really hold their value is, is just the base rookie cards you know you're talking around thirty dollars here so so as long as you have something numbered or colored or some kind of variation I think I think these will hold up pretty well the autographs like I said do pretty well also and you know another PSA 9 autograph went for 375 here and, and I don't even think those are numbered so I'm um, looking at you know 2023 version you can see the gunner base just went for 24 25 dollars and uh, it, yeah it's I guess the, the base rookie cards are not going to hold value, kind of like I, I thought they might. You got an image variation here at 86, and let's see if we can find an autograph. Yeah, 120 for this image variation. Let's see. Here's just a red border card for 355, and image variation 125. So here's an autograph, a base autograph for Gunner went for 410. So like, so the autographs, if you have, if you have an autograph of the right player and you can get a PSA 10, I think uh, you, you'll find that, that those hold up pretty well. And so for the staying power and desirability, I'm going to give that a four on the list. And so if you add them all up, you're look, looking at five, four, 10, 13. So you're at 13 out of uh, the 20 possible score. And... The biggest problem, I think, is it's just the checklist. It's huge. It's huge. But the price is good. The grading is uh, it's okay. The desirability is pretty good. The checklist is it's, it's just pretty rough. So for me, the checklist being down at a one, I'm going to avoid this. I'm going to say this is something that we want to skip. If you're looking to make a good return on your investment, I'd say skip it. So let us know what you think. And until next time, stay curious.